What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today I have a special treat for you actually. The developers were really cool about this one, so we get to take a look at the hotly awaited Norland. If you haven't seen this game before, it's going to be one of those games that draws comparisons to RimWorld very quickly. Not just because of the art style, but because of the layout of the game, the way that it sort of feels and appears. But I would actually describe this more as something like, oh, I don't know. RimWorld meets a little bit of Crusader Kings in there where it's a lot more about intrigue and how you deal with your neighbors and how you deal with internal and external threats while simultaneously doing the colony survival thing. And it's set in a gritty, dark, sort of bloody medieval universe where you are a lord and your job is to keep your land going as long as possible while everything is sort of decaying and being taken over by bandits and rival kingdoms all around you. We're going to play the game for about 30 minutes here today. The developers have fired over a special unlocked build. The demo will be available, so you'll be able to play the first 15 days of this game on Monday. I think is when they're releasing with the next festival, but they gave me an unlocked version. So hopefully the day that this video goes live, we'll be able to stream it for three or four hours and I can show you what some deeper content looks like. But let's go ahead and start up a new game. Uh, it's gonna do the exact same thing here that it's gonna do in RimWorld, except that the only people that matter in this game are nobles. So you know your normal colonists in RimWorld, how every single one of them has like a personality and things that they want and things that they need. In this game, doesn't matter unless you're a lord. Nobody cares what the peasants want. The peasants are just here to do work. The lords are the ones that actually have personality personalities and desires and things that they want and they are the engine by which the entire rest of the game functions for better or worse based on their skill sets. I'm not going to fiddle around with this too much because I just want to get into some gameplay. I will mess with my sigil though but there's a whole bunch of customization you can do to your lords. Your lords will also have different stats that affect different things that they do. So when it comes to diplomacy you want them to have manners and persuasion. When it comes to learning new technologies and doing research you want them to have intellect. When it comes to keeping the peasants working and making money, you want them to have management as a skill. And so you want to pay attention to this stuff and you want to have a pretty even spread of stats as you go into the game. Still, not going to do too much customization here, except that I am going to rename my, my lands. We'll call it Splatistan. There we go. Off we go, and we live inside of Sparksville over here with various resources. There are other places nearby, but I haven't unlocked them yet, uh, so I assume that there's going to be much harder starts and much easier starts, so on and so forth. All of these little counties right here also have lords that are in charge of them, and they are after your stuff. You need to think of this game like Medieval Intrigue. If, the, if they are not you, they are after your stuff, and you need to deal with them basically as Machiavellian as possible. There's going to be a lot of poisonings. There's going to be a lot of stabbings. There's going to be a lot of nastiness in this game. Uh, Norland, the year 2898, since the creation of the world. 200 years have passed since the Great Crimson Empire perished in the flames of the religious war. Its former provinces have become the barbaric kingdoms kept from mutual destruction only by the all-powerful Church of Holy Sophia. While the Holy Prophets speak of the impending end of the world, events unfold on the eastern outskirts that will influence the entire history of the world. Uh, if you wanted to get this game, I got a link for you down below in the description. Then, of course, on top of that, you'll find links to the Discord. That's what I'm going to ping when I go live with this game on the day that this video goes live. So that we can hopefully have a nice chunky VOD up for people to sort of consume. And we can maybe, like, explore some of the more advanced tenets of the game. But here is our village. After a long, exhausting journey, I'm going to summarize here. We have arrived at our lands. The nobles are all kind of like cranky right now because one of us has been kidnapped by bandits along the periphery. All right. So this is the game kind of introducing you to that first little chunk of storyline that they want you to work on, which is proving that you're competent enough to balance your economy well enough to be able to hire some mercenaries or you can get some uh, employ. You, you can get some prisoners with jobs to go and rescue them like you can just put a bunch of knives in the hands of prisoners with jobs and send them to go get them but either way it's going to take a bunch of money to rescue this person either by paying the ransom that they want you to pay or by going over there and just smacking the pink off of them first thing we need to do is let's take a look at our village this is our dormitory and this is where all of our peasants live these over here are noble houses for whatever reason they're not lined up by default they just look like that 
Little, little, little thing that drives me crazy. I usually prefer to have like organized streets and, and things all in alignment, but the game says otherwise. So this episode is obviously going to be a test of my ability to resist gaming-related OCD. This is our main hall. Uh, it looks like Bent is the guy that's in charge right now. Well, that wasn't exactly what I wanted, but Bent is the guy who's in charge. And this entire game functions on that engine. So you have a building. That building has a function. You put a noble in charge of that building, and they will go there once a day, and they will hurl insults at peasants. And depending on how they are good they are at hurling insults, the peasants will work better or worse for the rest of the day on getting that task done. This right here is our hall, so it's in charge of all construction. That's all that matters, is that Bent is going to be yelling at people till they go and build stuff. So let's go build stuff. The first thing that our community is absolutely going to need is a lumber mill. So we'll get one of those stamped out. The next thing that we're probably going to need is going to be related to food. And it looks like we've got a rutabaga field. I don't know if I've ever grown rutabagas in a video game before. The rutabagas. We will put them over there. And so they have been placed. We also have breweries. We have some other service economy stuff. I would probably suggest putting down the tavern early. In this game, your peasants require food every single day, and they require like a beer or like a whiskey or like an ale every couple days. Otherwise, they start to get cranky, and they start thinking about things like rebellion. And you can see here, Bent is now shouting at the sky. After he gets done shouting at the sky, you'll see a bunch of these peasants. They'll kind of skip to Malu and start building stuff. And as you can see, they've gotten to it. Somebody's carrying a crate and they're deciding what they want to build for the day because I think they can only really go after one construction site at a time. They've opted to build the bar, which makes sense to me. Like, would you rather build a lumber mill? Would you rather construct a field of toil? Or would you rather construct a place where you go to get, like, you know, wrecked fasted? I I'm kind of with the peasants on this one. All of your lords, they will have different desires. And they will also have different things that are, like, wrong with them or right with them. Uh, they will have various, basically, flaws and perks that make them good at some things and bad at other things. And so keep an eye on those. You'll also be able to figure out what they want uh, from inside of this menu right here. You can see what thoughts they're all having. So this guy right here has a need for piety. Until he gets it, he's going to be cranky. This guy over here actually doesn't want anything, though, so that's great. Uh, the entire, this game has its own lore, and it has its own culture, too, so we are all a part of the Church of Holy Sophia, and basically, these are blessed holy rings up here. Every society in this game has, like, a certain supply of blessed holy rings, and they are given out to people like merit badges, effectively, for being good little Boy Scouts. Uh, you're gonna need to have those in order to kind of, every now and again, your lords are gonna be like, I don't, I feel like I've been forsaken by the gods. Someone shower down bejeweled holy blessed rings on me. And then they just walk around town with like their 25 rings on their fingers feeling better about themselves because why not? Uh, this field up here is probably going to lie fallow till tomorrow. However, I'll put Brent on it. These guys kind of have crappy skills. These guys are not good at management. It would figure... Yeah, he's got a 50% nerf to his efficiency on that building. Weak. Uh, it would figure that the person that got captured is our manager. It couldn't. The person that got captured randomly at the beginning of the game, of course, couldn't be one of our lords that's terrible at everything. It's got to be the one lady that would make our economy run smoothly and the trains run on time. You can see here, Bent has wandered over and he is now swearing at the sky. You got to swear at the sky long enough until the peasants know you want them to go to work. And also, we've got our lumber mill down now, which is great. I'm going to put Bent on it again. Your guys can have multiple jobs, so don't stress about it too much. Uh, you can assign them to do a lot of different things. He looks like he's going over here to either think about cutting someone's hand off. Uh, now he's thinking about how great it is to be king. Yeah, I bet. He's thinking about Red Skulls. He must have just seen the Avengers recently or like the Captain America preview move or the Captain America prelude movie or something. I don't know. Either way, we've got to probably wait till tomorrow till anything else gets done. So I'm just going to speed up time and we'll see if we get there. Also, seven migrants have arrived, which is a little unfortunate. Didn't want to deal with more people right now because we don't have the housing for the people that we have. But there's jolly good celebratory music on the breeze. Apparently, someone has decided to unleash Harmonious Ditty on us all. And so Harmonious Ditty it is. Well, they're fighting in here. Why are they fighting? 
Why is he beating that lady with a filled goblet? I don't know what's transpiring right now. Did somebody have like a mood breakdown? Shame for sins. He wants to confess to a bishop. I'm going to need like a little bit more. So this person's homeless, which means they are one of the new transients that just moved in. So basically these seven people moved from across the kingdom to come punch the king in the face. It's pretty based. <laughs> we are going to need like a holy altar, I think, before like pretty much all of our lords are obsessed with being holy. My last run when I was learning the game, they were all obsessed with getting laid. This time around, they're all obsessed with being religious. And so I'm going to go ahead and build an altar, although I can't help but notice if you look at our altar, it, um, I get the feeling the gods that we worship are pretty gnarly. Like, it looks like she has, like, a shovel and an arrow, and then there are piles of skulls all around there. So I think we may have some kind of, like, Warhammer 40k, like, the Emperor's Divine Religion thing going on here. A lot of people don't know this, but the reason why there's so much iconography of skulls in Warhammer 40k is because there's skulls everywhere to remind people that service only ends in death. And some people, they want their skulls to continue being used as materials for, like, doors and, you know adornments on random like gables and things because they don't want their service to ever end that's how brainwashed people are is that they'll even sacrifice pieces of their bodies to ornament temples and things like that after they die so that they can serve in perpetuity in this game you have a centrally planned economy you can handle it through the finance menu over here this is where you're going to set the price of pretty much everything you buy and sell inside of your territory this is accurate to the period they had a thing called canon law in medieval times especially in britain uh, that dictated the behaviors of merchants and what you were allowed to do. For example, it was like the law that 24 eggs cost one pence in like the year 1300. If you were caught selling for more than that, uh, you could lose a hand or you could lose a tongue. It wasn't good, but they had those harsh penalties for a reason. The standard fare in medieval times is that if you were a merchant, you arrived in a town or city. You had to go basically to the market authority. You had to sign in. You had to declare all your goods. You had to tell them what you were selling them for and then they would tell you what you were going to sell them for if you were out of alignment with what canon law dictated. Then you would go to the market, you would sell your stuff, you would go back to the market authority, you would declare your earnings, you would pay your tax, and then you would go on your way down the road. The reason why they had that system under canon law is because they had a big problem in medieval times, just like we have now with basically people making too much money with scummy methods. So what merchants would do back in the old days is they would park like two miles from the city, on the only choke point in the town and they would just sit there and they would buy out all the apples for example from every merchant that was headed to the town and then once they owned all the apples they would wait for there to be an apple shortage in town they would go into town and they would sell the apples for ridiculously marked up prices well lords and kings aren't stupid they noticed that merchants were doing this and it was causing lots of problems and there you go like canon law was born ah uh, just another day of shouting at the peasants <laughs> it's good to be king. Sometimes you just, sometimes you got to yell at some peasants, man. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You got to be like, look, listen, you with the underpants on your head. I'm very disappointed with your rutabaga output. All right. It looks like our altar is almost done. The game's a little bit quiet. It doesn't really have like a whole lot of music or like background stuff going on. It's what I've sort of noticed. Oh my God. They lit it on fire by default. The skulls are on fire too. Okay, I think we may not be the good guys in this story. We might be the bad guys. I don't think the good guys have skulls on fire in their churches. That's all that I'm saying is that, like, we're all dressed up like a secret area in doom right now, and, and I don't think the good guys do that. Uh, something else we can apply ourselves to is we can focus on getting a library. Uh, a librarium is going to be very helpful in the noble quarter. We can assign our nobles to sit around and learn how to do things by going through ancient manuscripts. And so we need to learn new technologies because we can get rutabagas right now and rutabagas will keep us fed. However, I don't know what the output is going to look like on these rutabagas right here. Like, I don't know how many it's going to produce on a given go. It said that it spits them out every three days, but we're at 50% efficiency right now, which leads me to believe, is he making out with a peasant right now? What, what What's happening here, Jorgen? Oh, I think they were just looking at the shrine and feeling love in their hearts, but their little sprite was overlapped. I thought they were spooning in front of the flaming skulls. 
because really nothing's an aphrodisiac like the burning body parts of your slain enemies, I guess. Now that our library's up, I would strongly suggest we start working on research. We want hop fields and we want beer. Either that or we want rye fields. Let's do rye fields first. And I think actually, yeah, Jorgen, for the rest of his flaws, Jorgen is really good at research. So that's good. Uh, we just need to get Elsa back so that we can get our economy on track. You can see where Elsa is on the world map. So if you take a look over here, uh, we live right here in Splatistan. We have Great Mist to our left, and it looks like Lord Killian uh, doesn't hate us. He's fine with us. It looks like Wind Peak is basically not even aware of our existence. Hayward, kind of similar. And it looks like Grimbird is kind of there, too. Now, we can send emissaries. In this game, you have a resource called Paper. For each paper that you have, you can send a messenger to another kingdom to talk with them and try to increase your reputation or to try to overthrow them or try to take over their stuff or try to poison their kids or whatever it is that you want to do, depending on how conniving you want to be. Uh, but they don't even have weapons. Dude, we should just go get this lady. Let's, let's hire an army and just go get this thing done, dude. Who's dope at fighting? Jorgen is. All right. So as soon as Jorgen is done learning how to make rye fields, which will probably be like tomorrow, we will... How many people are unemployed over here? Total... No, they, we have three unemployed peasants. We get 15 wood a day. I think we're going to set up to be like wood choppers for now. We're about to get a lot more peasants anyways, so like who cares? Uh, let's put in another lumber mill over here, maybe. That way we're we're chopping a little bit better and getting like 30 of these. Because I, I think these sell for like $2 to a merchant, which doesn't seem like much. But if the merchant comes like every five days and we're only building like one thing during that time that costs 40, that means we've got 110 overhead that we can sell and we can flip to get other things that we can't quite produce yet via our construction chains. There's a jaunty tune. Hmm, raise your flagons. I mean, if you don't have a flagon, go ahead and just raise a burning skull, I guess. Uh, we've got the holy knowledge. Very nice. So now what we need to do is we need to go to the army menu. And if I can remember how to do this, this is a bit of like a granular thing. So we create an army under the lead of Jorgen. And then our warriors, we don't really have any. So what we'll want to do is we will want to... It said there was like, what, seven bandits over there? Chances are that we are going to want to bring like three of these guys that are combat three. It said the enemy has no weapons though. So if we cruise over there with weapons, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure we're gonna bludge these guys inside out. So I'll hire these three guys right here, but I think it takes a couple days for them to get here or like a day or two. So we're gonna have to wait it out now for now. And there of course is our first trader who has a fancy hat. If we wanted to assign someone to trade, we could do that with Jorgen. We're probably not going to get great prices. My last run, I had way better guys. Like, my last run, I had dudes that had all kinds of skills and stuff. They had, like, kung fu skills, dude. They had trading skills. We were getting a little bit of everything. But the trader shows up pretty much every other day. So, if you miss a trader, don't be too upset about it. He'll be back. Uh, we've got lots of wood surplus, so I'm going to go ahead and sell my wood over here. That gives us 281 bucks which almost covers the mercenaries that I just hired. However, I think what I would like to purchase is we have plenty of food. We have a little bit of beer. I think I'd actually like to buy your medicine out would be the first thing that I would look at. And after buying your medicine, let's go ahead and get like three light armors, I suppose. Yeah, that'll be fine for right now. We'll just kind of flip our wood surplus for the moment. And then over here, it looks like we've only got one worker over there, so that's good. We're going to need to start delegating. We're getting a lot of jobs, and so we need to go rescue this other noble, like, soon. Oh, look, they're drinking and making merry over here. They're putting their hands in the air like they just don't care. I want to see a concert where people put their hands in the air like they do care and, and see if that makes, like, a qualitative difference in the energy of the, con in the, energy of the concert. I don't think it's ever been tried since like the 80s. They've been saying to put your hands in the air like you just don't care. And I'm like, what if we just tried the opposite? It's been like 30 years. Maybe mix it up a little bit. One thing I have noticed is that nighttime takes a little while in this game. They may want to take it from 3x and have it increase up to like 5 or 6x 
when everybody's just kind of like sleeping and not doing anything just so you can get through the nighttime faster. They also don't have biphasic sleep in this game. Considering they had like canon law in it and like finance control, I was expecting they would have biphasic sleeping, but during this time period, people slept twice a day. So you know how like nowadays we sleep from like, let's call, okay, I'm gonna be, let's say that you sleep from 10 p.m till 6 a.m. every day. You have one big sleep. Medieval people didn't do that. Medieval people went to bed around the time the sun went down and they would sleep till about midnight and then they would get up and they would tell stories and they would eat a meal and they would have sex. That was considered the best time to try to have children was in between your first and second sleeps. Uh, they would do, they would talk to the neighbors, they would sing songs, all that kind of stuff. And then around like three or four in the morning, they would go back to sleep until the sun came up. It's called biphasic sleeping. It's basically the way that human beings have slept for all of our existence until the Industrial Revolution forced us all to live a life of never-ending anxiety and exhaustion. I'm watching you, Blaine. I don't know what you're up to, Blaine, but I'm watching you. I can see you blaining the place up, man. Let's try to keep the blaining to a minimum out here. Another fun fact about canon law is that it's still in effect some places in Britain. Not too long ago, there was a farmer's market that opened up in a little village, and the constables had to come shut it down because there was still a law on the books from the 1300s that said that no one was allowed to open up a market anywhere except for in the central town. And just people forgot that that was a law. Like, it's been... An it's been so long since anybody listened to it, and so it was one of those awkward situations. Happens every- it's like the guy that demanded trial by combat because he found out it was still on the books. Like, 500 years later, his lawyer figured out or he figured out that you could still demand a trial by combat. Our hired warriors have arrived. Good. So we're gonna add a few more people to this stomp fest. Whoever might be the best at stabbing should go on this adventure. And it seems like you guys are fairly decent at stabbing. So let's go ahead and open up an army that's run by Jorgen. And then from there... I think we just click these guys and it puts them in the army. Sorry, this is where the game gets a little like menu based and a little bit like dramatic. And then I think we have to give everybody weapons. I think it'll probably be fine. Like, that should be good for creating that army. And what you'll see here is he'll get a little rally flag and he'll put his armor on. And all of these guys will put their armor on and they will now follow him around. And so I think once everybody's equipped, we should be good to go. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of guys, I think, that are coming in to join the, the fun here. There we go. We now have our little army. And battles in this game are actually pretty cool. So now we want to take these guys right here, and we are going to want to find our lord on the list, Jorgen. And we sort of want to, like, send him over to go and kill those guys. That's pretty much it. So now what we do is we assign an attack right here, basically. So there will be a bunch of guys over here. Uh, we got to click on this location. Like, this game's got a little bit of a fiddly-diddly menu, but that's only due to the fact that there's so many things you can do. What you need to memorize about this UI is that everything you can click on will have an action button right here, and if you click on that, it'll open up a fat menu or a small menu that will have all of the options available to you for things that you can do. And so we'll send Squad Jorgen over there, and you should actually see them leave. So there they are right there. You can see them traveling on down the road to go and attack my enemies. Rena to Bent spread rumors about Cairn. Why would you do that? Oh, never mind. It worked out. They like us a lot more now. They have a plus 35 opinion of us. Sweet. And as you can see, other lords are, like, moving around and doing diplomacy and attacking, too. Like, this world is not just static. There are things happening here. Like, people are manipulating politics, and you need to keep an eye on, like, did someone poison my neighbors against me? Like, who are my allies? Who are my enemies? And as time goes along, this will kind of spiral a little bit into, like, little alliances and groups of people that like each other versus don't like each other. You will intermarry. You know, you will have children, all that kind of fun stuff. So, like, over here, we could assign politics. So it looks like we can offer rings to the king. Uh, we could go for a peace treaty. We can do dark deeds like stabbings, kidnappings. We can rob their library for knowledge. Uh, we can't do anything right now, though, because the city is under attack by wargs. And so they are surrounded by wargs, unfortunately. When he arrives right here, we click on this button. 
And then we say, attack! And now you're going to see your first battle where we will draw blood. Off you go, Jorgen. Lead them to war. Oh, they have weapons. We were lied to. They said that they wouldn't have weapons. Oh, no. And so as you can see, stabbings, murders, and otherwise murderous debauchery will now take place. Some people are having their heads crushed with swords. Uh, there is lots of blood and violence and disgustingness in this game. Whether or not your people run and flee in combat is largely going to depend on your leader's leadership skill. Uh, so when I picked him to lead the army, I took the highest leadership skill on purpose because every time anyone takes damage in this game, there's a chance that they and people around them will just pull a runner. It looks like we lost one guy right there, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, no, he's unconscious. He's not dead. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we've completed the battle, and so I think we should be able to rescue Elsa now. I don't know if she's on the map or whatever. we got to go find her, and there's our battle results. You get this cool little art right here, too. So they've taken, like, the RimWorld graphics and made them a little bit schnazzier, but they've also got these really cool artworks for all the confirmations and whatnot. Uh, we have won, and Elsa's been freed, and she will now return to the city. The attack was a success. We made 400 bucks, which covered the overhead on the mercenaries, I don't know what that little icon means right there, but all of my neighbors are stoked because I killed off bandits and they heard about it. So now they think I am more valorous than once I was. Apparently, there's a big brawl between one of the foreigners that's visiting our town and some of our peasants. We're getting smashed in the face with goblets again. <laughs> and then he just drags her off the look on his face. Keep telling you not to mess with the lobos when they got a goblet in their hand. At least everyone's praying at the shrine right now. So that's good. We've got scars, gangrene. Oh, goodness. Okay, that's not great. Do I have like a doctor's building or something? I think I probably need a doctor's building to fix this. I actually don't know if we have a warehouse, which might be the place that they can go grab medicine from. I don't know. I'm going to tell them to go build one. We'll find out what happens after it's been built. So the army has returned, and I believe that it is time to disband this army. And I've got to remember how to do that. I don't recall. Who are those guys right there? Are those the bandits? Did we like, why are they all tied up? Did we catch them? Oh yeah, it looks like we uh, took some of the bandits as uh, prisoners with jobs. So that works out. We'll take a look at them and we'll figure out whether or not they've got like a rebellious spirit. Tribute is ready. Cool. I like tribute. Yeah, send a messenger to go get it. And then send a messenger to go grab our tribute to the king, too, over there. Good. Splatterstan grows stronger through the usage of hops, and what do they want? Olna has released or reached the age of marriage and awaits proposals from suitors. You'll have to pay the bride price of $975. That's not too bad for a wife, man. That's not... The wife economy actually seemed kind of okay out here. Like, I would have expected to pay at least, like, five times that much for a wife. So, like, things seem to be going pretty good. Uh, building needs a manager. Elsa, you're, you're pretty much the only person that's good at this stuff, so you go ahead and handle that for me, would you? We got that taken care of already. We've got that taken care of. There's a heretic cult in the northern woods. Are the northern woods in my territory, or is that somebody else's problem? Listen, I don't see no heretics around here, so I'm going to take a rough guess and say that's not my problem. At least that's what I'm hoping. I don't feel like dealing with any more battles right now. That last one was a little bit rough. And so it looks like the warehouse is now open. Someone is furiously screaming at the sky. And Tesla and Bent are going on a date. Really? Where is she from? Oh, the pop-up doesn't say. Hold on, we got to find that little icon of the little leaf on the map. Oh, they're from Treewood, the most literally named place ever. <laughs> what shall we call this place? There are trees, my lord. And what are those trees made of? Wood, my lord. Then Treewood we shall call it. They always do that here in the United States, man. Everything is named like Walnut Hill or something. I'm like, well, there's a hill and there were some walnuts on it. We just call it Walnut Hill. Uh, tribute has been collected. So we've gotten all of our kingly tributes right now. I swear to God, every place, I, everything in where I live is named like a food stuff or a tree and then a geographical identifier. So like, it's Walnut Creek. 
it's Acorn Hill. Like, it's just like, you guys couldn't come up with anything better? Like, you guys couldn't, like, throw a Greek reference in or something? I guess we do have a Sebastopol here, so, like, they did bring some stuff from the old world. Uh, Bent has cheated on his spouse with Tesla. Of course, why would... Why wouldn't you? Apparently. Nobles, man. They're always getting up to no good. Bent, who are you even married to, sir? He feels shame from his infidelity. Well, then why did you do it, you idiot? Like, you just led a victorious char- Well, okay, Jorgen did it. Your wife is probably shacking up with Jorgen because Jorgen chatted up and- he Jorgen chatted up and went and rescued your wife. But you did pay for it, King Bent. So, like, still- I, I would assume that a wife would want you to show up, you know, banners waving, like, leading the charge, not send some other guy that you delegated to do it. Bent was seduced. His loyalty is now under threat. Uh-oh. How do I fix that? Bent, why is your loyalty under threat? Secondly, are these guys dead or are they just sleeping? They're just sleeping. I think I need more houses, man. It appears to me that we don't have enough housing for all of these peasants. I didn't realize this entire time, like, more peasants have been moving in. We have five homeless right now. Like, five homeless is not great. You can get upgrades to some of these things, but at the moment, I don't think we have it. So he already has that information, so we should be able to make a rye field now. Good. There's our rye field. And now that our rye field is done, we also want to have a miller in town to convert the rye. There we go. We want them to convert the rye into grains that we can feed to people and make bread. Uh, Bent and Elsa are spending time in... Dude, right after you just got done cheating on your old lady? In... It's been three hours, bro. He's like, my refractory period's good. I don't see what you're so upset about. I've got needs, bro. I've got a high-powered libido. It's good to be king. And then he's going on another date with her, bro. Oh, my man plays it hard and fast. He's just leaning into it at this point. My man needs to go to the confessional. How do I get a bishop? I need to get a bishop to move into my town. That's what I really need. I should probably build another house too that people like live inside of and can like do stuff. There we go. I'm just gonna like future proof and we'll just build two of them because we're not necessarily hurting for wood right now. I think I can also do like roads and stuff. I should probably do that. Does it cost me anything to put down like stone roads? Oh, you just paint them out. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I mean, we could make the place look nicer though. There's nothing wrong with getting a little like decorative with it, you know what I mean? Taking some civic pride in the place that we currently occupy. This painting tool's a little bit iffy. I would probably just let players rubber ba like rubber band box it. I don't know. I like rubber band boxes a little bit better than paint. Maybe I can. Control, shift, alt. None of it appears to be working. All right. All right. That's fine. I didn't, I didn't want to do that anyways. So we've got like a little bit of that going over there. There we go. Just have a road run that way. Have a road run up to there. And then we like paint that out so that people know where we live at. Dude, our town's looking dope, dude. Let's get, look at this town right here. This is a town... Where you could tell the oh, dude. <laughs> Tesla is pregnant with Bent's child. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um. Karen, are you married to Tesla? Fantastic. I was going to say, that's the only way that this could get worse, is if the neighboring noble is married to Tesla. In which case, this situation just got really, really bad. We have a lot of peasants sleeping on the streets right now. I haven't really kept ahead of my, my responsibilities here. Let's get the hop field and beer learned real fast, because they're going to need beers, and it looks like we're going through them at a decent rate right now. We've used up about half of our beers, so we need to get, need to get beers going. Elsa has comforted Jorgen. Wouldn't recommend that. Well, I mean, Bent, I guess. Bent is kind of a scumbag. Jorgen is the hero that rescued you, so that's fair. That's fair. If Elsa starts sleeping with Jorgen at this point, 
I just don't know how we're going to fix this situation. It's just going to be a mess. But my name is Splattercat. This is Norland. I'm very happy with it so far. I think this seems like a lot of fun. We'll see how much diversity there is in the game of gameplay. And we'll see just, like, how much, you know, there is to do when we stream the game. But I'm more than welcome to enjoy. I, I hope you'll come. Let's swing on through the stream. I'll ping the Discord. Join the Discord. I'll ping it when I go live. It's usually in the afternoons every day. Pacific time. That's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. And also, you know the little guys that were lying around over here? I figured that out. They were still inside of my army. You have to, like, disband it. Otherwise, they don't, like, leave and go back to doing their own stuff, I don't think. I think the Lord does, but, oh, no, they all go back to doing their thing. Well, there you go. They're all going back to doing their thing now. That's how you fix it. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. This is Norland, and I will catch you all later. Oh, there it is. Oh, and she has the poisoner trait, too. Well, Bent, you got some problems, my man. See y'all later. <laughs>